The federal judge overseeing the former president's indictment on election interference has denied his attempt to dismiss charges based on a claim of presidential immunity. At one point in her ruling, uh, the judge, Tanya Chutkin, writes, quote, defendant's four-year service as commander-in-chief did not bestow on him the divine right of kings to evade the criminal accountability that governs his fellow citizens. This decision comes the same day as another setback for the former president of federal court in Washington. A three-judge appeals court panel decided he can be sued in civil court related to his actions during the January 6th riot at the Capitol. The decision was unanimous, sought to distinguish between campaign speech and official actions of a president. It's a victory for the Capitol Police and lawmakers behind three separate cases affected by the decision, plus others who may now seek civil damages as well. Perspective on all this from CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman, senior political correspondent for The New York Times, also the author of Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America. Also, Caroline uh, Polisi, she's a White House, uh, she's, a, excuse me, a white collar criminal defense attorney. She's also a lecturer at Columbia Law School. How big, Maggie, of a blow to the uh, former president is this? Look, it was always a long shot that this was going to go through or that Chutkin was going to rule on his side. She's made very clear in previous rulings how she views some of the claims that Trump has been making or his lawyers have been making. But what this do does do is it starts the clock on an appeal that they are going to have go through the courts, possibly go up to the Supreme Court. Uh, it, no one knows how the Supreme Court will rule, if they will even take it up. They don't have to. They have generally not sided with Trump on any of his election-related issues. They obviously have on other issues. Um, if they send this back if they, or if they rule against him, the clock then starts on the trial, but this buys time for his team. So this is not a surprising ruling, but it is a very, very lengthy ruling, and it refers to the, the Nixon pardon. It refers to a number of things that counter what Trump's team is arguing. Caroline, what stood out to you in these rulings? Yeah, I think, look, earlier today when the D.C. Circuit came out with the ruling with respect to the civil context, that was an easier bar to meet. Presidential immunity is really, um, you know, a thing that has been recognized by the Supreme Court since Nixon versus Fitzgerald. Trump was trying to push it further in the criminal context. Not surprising that Chutkin waited, I think, for sort of her superiors to come out with, with the ruling uh, this afternoon. And then immediately, I agree with Maggie, I think she's she wants to keep that March 4th trial date. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing that could potentially throw a wrench in those plans. If the case has somehow stayed pending an appeal, certainly, I, I think he certainly will appeal this ruling, um, as well as the D.C. Circuit ruling. And um, I think it is right for Supreme Court review. So do you think it's likely it would be stayed? Um, you know, just as Maggie was saying, you never know what the Supreme Court is going to do. They can take it, they cannot. They could stay, they could not. Um, but I think that that is sort of the, the, the question mark here with respect to that. It's looking like more and more like that's going to be the only trial that will sort of get in under the gun before uh, the election. Is it clear to you, Maggie, what other uh, arguments the president might make to try to get this thrown out? I think this was a big one. I think if I, I think getting it thrown out is going to be very, very hard. This was really it. This was the shot. It's possible someone was suggesting to me today that the Supreme Court could take up the gag order issue. That seems a little less likely than mm -hmm. this one, just because this is a presidential power issue and it's a little broader. Um, that the other one is specific to Trump as a defendant. I, I think this is it in terms of their shot of getting it thrown out entirely. Next up becomes just you know. Trump trying for an acquittal or trying for a hung jury or trying that those are their best hope. This is the, this is a case that being tried in DC Trump's allies and advisors think is unlikely to go his way just based on the events and based on what the jury pool will be. Um, but that's down the road. There was also Maggie the the pretrial hearing in the Georgia el mm -hmm. election case what stood out to you there? Well, it was interesting listening to this argument that the trial ought to start. I think it was there was some suggestion it should start in 2029 or something like that. I mean, well, well, well down the, the, the road. What you've heard over and over again from the Trump lawyers is there's such a volume of discovery. This is such an exotic case, and they've said this in various ones. We need time to go through everything for discovery. We need time to look at the evidence. In the Mar-a-Lago documents case, there are clearance issues there. There actually are in the January 6th case, too, although it's a, a little less so. Um, that it doesn't surprise me that they're talking about a delay. A delay of that much was surprising to me, and I would be mostly surprised if it works.
In New Georgia, the president's attorneys are arguing that it, this violates Trump's free speech, right? Yeah, and they, by the way, they made that argument um, today in the check-in motion as well, which which she denied. But the 2029 date, you know, that was under the scenario in which um, the judge asked Trump lawyers, well, what would happen if you were to be elected president? Essentially, it would stop the clock on um, that, that time to, to, to prosecute. But... Um, I have a different perspective because I'm a defense attorney. I think the August 2024 date is a bit aggressive. There are there's a backlog in the criminal in, in Fulton County, Georgia criminal court, um, and you know it cuts both ways. Any criminal defendant uh, shouldn't be you know above the law. I, I think uh, Fannie Willis is trying to push this case through. She wants to get it in before the election. I mm -hmm. think it's pretty apparent. Yeah. It, Maggie, which of these cases do you think the former president is most concerned about? I think he's concerned about all of them, honestly. I think that he's more concerned about the federal ones. The the documents case in particular concerns him, except for the judge in that case, which is one of his own appointees, and the fact that it's a more favorable jury pool just based on the mm -hmm. counties around the courthouse. The January 6th case angers him uh, for a variety of reasons, and you can see it when he talks about the election. It, it relates to uh, an event that he considered uh, humiliating, which is having to leave the White House. And so I think all of these things tie together. Uh, he's angry about the Manhattan indictment for different reasons. I mean, there, there's no case that makes him feel good here. They're all, they're all bad. But they are, most, they are most concerned right now about the January 6th one because they think that's the one that's likely as next. So basically, the, the humiliation is having to leave the White House as opposed to the humiliation of having his supporters break into the Congress and... We've heard him defend. Right. We've heard him defend that. Yep, so yes. that is not something that I have heard him sound uh, any any concession of shame about publicly. Um, to the point about fairness versus a speedy trial, though, I think that you are going to hear that over and over again. And it is the one place or a place where the Trump team has a legitimate point about the fact that Trump does have the same rights as any other defendant. Yeah. Caroline Polisi, thanks so much. Maggie Haberman, thank, thank you. you.